Everything we see around evokes different emotions in us. But have we ever thought about the fact that a person thinks in images? And these mental images in our head affect us as much as images in the outer world, putting us into different emotional, physiological and psychological states. That's so because when we put our attention into both images in the outside world and imaginary images, the same groups of neurons are activated in our head. And then hormonal and physical reaction in the body follows. Clinging to a positive image in the mind, for example, of purchasing a certain product or service, positive emotions of joy, pleasure and euphoria arise in the mind. In the brain we observe activation of neurons in the reward area of the mesocortical limbic system, the so-called pleasure area, and accordingly a surge of certain pleasure neurotransmitters, dopamine, serotonin, and internal opiates, endorphins, encephalins. If a person pays attention to a negative image, he will experience negative emotions, activation of neurons in the brain punishment system, and release of neurotransmitters of suffering, frustration or stress, acetylcholine, noradrenaline, adrenaline, cortisol. The hormones produced by the body are natural drugs. They give pleasure to primary consciousness and the body and it leads to a real physiological addiction to looking at images. Hormones are what the system pays a person for serving it. A person receives hormones as a reward when they perform actions that the system requires. The release of hormones is usually short-lived. However, consciousness is designed in such a way that it remembers any surge or any interest of a person in a particular image in the head. The system will offer the same image an infinite number of times in order to gain the energy of a person's attention. In this encoding system, the mind works in conjunction with the body and thus with all its basic instincts – fear of death, sex, food, desire for dominance. Information about any stimulation is encoded by a nerve cell in the form of frequency of action potentials averaged over a short period of time. In other words, in general, the work of the human brain is the work of an information and control device whose language is the frequency. Consequently, reflection of conscious and subconscious processes of the psyche takes place at the level of neuron discharge frequency. It means that when a person is sure that it is he who is in love, he who wants to eat, wants sex, is afraid of death, shows pride or wants power, at this moment just the coding takes place in his brain and nothing more. And the person, as a personality, is completely removed from the control of these processes and wastes his life in vain. Investing his attention into ghostly images, a person loses precious energy which is necessary for gaining real freedom from the dictatorship of consciousness. To get out of the dependence of images, it's important to control one's own thoughts. One must stop fantasizing and shift attention to perception through feelings. After all, this three-dimensionality is also an illusion, only a denser one. Knowing this, a person can stop associating oneself with the body and stop investing one's own attention into its reactions, thus changing the frequency of perception of consciousness. Then a person ceases to be a hostage and slave to the illusion of the material world. The realization that a person is not just body and intellect is gained through the experience of observation, control of thoughts, as well as meditative and spiritual practices. Then a person begins to realize oneself as a personality, and then he is actually above these trivial prescribed programs of animal nature that his true potential is revealed only when he loves God and people. 
this highest state of happiness and love exceeds any existing drugs. This is exactly the gain of true freedom, the way out of the illusion imposed by consciousness. And any person is free to choose either to stay in the illusion or to start living for real.